It was one of the most exciting bouts in the legendary history of Pride FC. The finish is a moment that even today stands out prominently within the long and impressive highlight reel of Nick Diaz. His Google plot of victory against the Fireball Kid, Takanori Yomi, is perhaps one of the craziest finishes of its era. But with the careers of both men seemingly over, and their strengths and weaknesses laid bare before us, I'm granted a bit more perspective into determining just how impressive or unimpressive this moment actually was. So with the benefit of hindsight, let's take a look at how good was this finish. What is going on everybody? Welcome to the Fight Dialogue. My name is Tim. So this is a new series that I'm starting where I study some of the most interesting finishes in recent MMA history and also a little bit farther back in MMA history. And I thought what better way to start than with Nick Diaz's Gogo Plata finish against Takanori Gomi, which was actually a suggestion that I had gotten in the Discord, so thanks for that. In order to break this down, I will judge the overall application of the technique while also taking into account the quality of the opponent and every relevant moment of the fight that may have led to the finish. At the end of the video, I will give a final grade that's based on a score from 1 to 10. So we begin the analysis here in the first round of the fight where Gomi is putting it on Diaz early. Taking him down within the first moments of the fight, landing big shots, and even managed to drop Diaz with a right hand halfway through the round. Despite this early success, Gomi was unknowingly writing the ultimate blueprint of what not to do in a fight against Nick Diaz. Gomi spent all that energy trying to finish off the Stockton native early, and by the end of the round, he was on the ropes getting the shit beaten out of him. It was an absolutely wild round. Unfortunately for Gomi, he didn't seem to have a second wind by the time the next round started, and went right back to blocking punches with his face for a little bit longer. Takanori was so tired, he shot in desperately for another takedown presumably to initiate a little bit of lay and pray to build back his energy. And it is here that we arrive at the actual finishing sequence. As Gomi shoots in for the double leg takedown, Diaz concedes the position in order to land safely into the closed guard. Notice Takanori has both hands on the mat here, as many fighters oftentimes will after finishing a double leg takedown. This is something that a good submission artist will recognize instantaneously and triggers them to attack, though usually with a triangle or sometimes a shoulder lock. Watch as Diaz brings up his left leg into a rubber guard position to trap Gomi's arm and left shoulder. Looks like Diaz is going for an omoplata here, which he could do if he wanted to, but he takes it a step further. He wants the choke, not a shoulder lock. Instead of just being content with the leg over the shoulder, he then weaves his ankle underneath the chin of the fireball kid. This is the Gogo Plata position. Gomi lets go of the leg, which Diaz immediately takes advantage of and throws it up and over Gomi's other shoulder. Now, any hope Gomi had of escaping has dwindled to almost nothing. If the right leg of Diaz was not in play, Gomi could have used his free hand to push down on Nick's foot to free him from the choke. And at that point, he just has to work on escaping the omoplata. But as I said, that escape is no longer there. Nick clamps down on the shoulder, which simultaneously breaks Gomi's posture and hides his ankle so that it's free to apply the choke. Diaz pulls down on the head, pushing Gomi's neck into his own ankle, completing the gogoplata and secures the tap. This was the first time most MMA fans have ever even heard of a Gogo Plata, let alone seen one done so efficiently. Even today, it's a rare submission to see in MMA. In terms of who the technique was applied on, Takanori Gomi was an incredible fighter. At the time, he was Pride's golden child and was easily Pride's most successful lightweight. Later in Gomi's career, we discovered that his submission defense would end up being his biggest weakness. But at the time, he had only had one loss via submission, and he was at the very least a competent grappler for that time period. This win would put Diaz on the map for a lot of people, 
and even though it was unfortunately overturned on the official record due to Nick testing positive for the devil's lettuce, most of the MMA community still recognizes it as an incredible win for the Stockton native. With all these things being considered, I'm going to have to give this finish a grade of 9 out of 10. So that just about does it for this episode of how good was this finish. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I plan on doing more like this in the future. And if you have any suggestions of uh, what you want to see next in this series, let me know in the comments below. Huge shout out to you, my patrons and channel members. You guys make this video and pretty much all my videos possible. So thank you so much for supporting the channel. Don't forget to like the video and thanks so much for watching. Take care.